Here we're gonna calculate the value of a nice integral involving the exponential of a trig function. In particular, we're gonna find the value of one over pi times the integral from zero to pi of e to the two cosine theta d theta. We're gonna use two pretty straightforward tools along our calculation, but we'll prove each of them just for completeness. The first one follows from Euler's formula for the complex exponential e to the i theta, and then the second one involves an integral of something like that. So let's go ahead and look at this first tool. So I'm going to just state the following fact, which is Euler's formula, e to the i theta is equal to cosine theta plus i sine theta. And that follows from like the Maclaurin expansion of the right hand and the left hand side of this equation pretty quickly. Then next we wanna look at e to the minus i theta and notice that is going to be cosine of minus theta plus i times sine of minus theta. But now we wanna use the very important fact that the cosine is an even function so that means that we can change the minus to a plus in there without doing anything and sine is an odd function. So that means we can change here the minus to a plus if we scrub this plus and turn it into a minus. So that's by the parity of those two functions. So now we're just gonna add both sides of this equation. So that's gonna give us e to the i theta plus e to the minus i theta is equal to two cosine theta and then the imaginary part cancels on the right hand side. Okay, so we've established this first tool. And now we're ready to look at this second tool. So it says that one over two pi times the integral from minus pi to pi of e to the i m theta d theta is equal to one if m is zero and it's equal to zero otherwise. We can mash this all together into something called the Kronecker delta symbol. So this could be delta m comma zero if you wanna like write it more succinctly. So we're gonna take this two different cases and so we'll first look at the case when m equals zero, and in that case, the integral will become one over two pi, the integral from minus pi to pi of, well, we have e to the zero, that's just one, so we have d theta. But clearly, we have one over two pi times the length of the interval, pi to minus pi. So that's gonna be one over two pi times two pi, so that's gonna give us one, which is exactly what we wanted. Okay, so now let's say what happens if m is not equal to zero. So now we'll have one over two pi, the integral from minus pi to pi of e to the i m theta, d theta. So using Euler's formula, that's one over two pi, the integral from minus pi to pi of cos m theta plus i sine m theta, d theta, now we can take the antiderivative of both parts of this. That's gonna give us one over two pi. So the antiderivative of the cosine term will give us one over m times the sine of m theta. So that's just reversing the chain rule gives us that one over m term. And then we'll have minus i over m times cosine of m theta. Again, like reversing the chain rule and taking the antiderivative of sine, which will be negative cosine. Okay, so the next thing that we wanna do is plug in theta equals minus pi and theta equals pi. Great, so notice sine of m times pi will be zero because here we're assuming m is an integer. Sine of m times negative pi will also be zero, again, because m is an integer, so that means this part goes to zero and we're gonna be left with minus i over two m pi times the quantity cosine of m pi minus cosine of minus m pi. But then again, we know that the cosine is an even function, so this minus sine can be just like disappeared by the evenness, the parity of cosine, and then we have cosine m pi minus cosine m pi, and we get that this is equal to zero. And that's exactly what we wanted for this second tool. And now we're ready to move on to our main result. 
So the first thing that I'm gonna do is notice that e to the two cosine theta is an even function. So that means I can double the interval over which we are integrating if I multiply the whole thing by a half as long as I take symmetry into account. So this is going to be equal to one over two times pi, and now the integral from minus pi up to pi of e to the two cos theta d theta. Great. So that's just taking advantage of the evenness of cosine theta. Okay, the next thing that we wanna do is use the Maclaurin expansion of e to the u. So let's maybe recall that really quick. I didn't wanna prove that as a tool, but we'll just recall it over here. That's gonna be the sum n equals zero to infinity of u to the n over n factorial. So that's the expansion of the exponential function. So let's see, that, that applied to our setup will give us one over two pi. Now we have this integral from minus pi to pi, and now this sum, n equals zero up to infinity of two times cosine theta to the n over n factorial d theta. Okay, great. Now what I wanna do is apply my first tool to rewrite this two cosine theta as e to the i theta plus e to the minus i theta. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're gonna take this and replace it with e to the i theta plus e to the minus i theta. And at the same time, we'll rearrange the order of summation and integration. So that is going to give us one over two pi and now we'll have the sum as n goes from zero to infinity. I'm gonna take this one over n factorial out front. So that's like this term right here. And then we'll have the integral from minus pi to pi of e to the i theta plus e to the minus i theta all to the n power d theta. Great. Now the next thing that we wanna do is use the binomial expansion formula. So that's another tool that we're gonna need, but I wasn't gonna prove that either, so I didn't list it over here. So let's maybe recall that over on this side. If we have a plus b to the n, that's going to be equal to the sum as k goes from zero to n of n choose k, where that's the binomial coefficient, and then we have a to the n minus k times b to the k. Great. And so we're going to apply this expansion onto our term e to the i theta plus e to the minus i theta all to the n power. So let's see what that gives us. So we're gonna have one by two pi. Now this sum as n goes from zero to infinity, one over n factorial. And now we're gonna have this integral minus pi to pi of the sum as k goes from zero up to n of the binomial coefficient n choose k. And now we'll have e to the i theta all to the n minus k power and e to the minus i theta all to the k power. Again, using like our binomial expansion formula over there where capital A is e to the i theta and capital B is e to the minus i theta. Okay, good. Now I wanna mash this together and that'll be the last line on this board. So this is gonna be one over two pi and now we have this sum n goes from zero to infinity of one over n factorial and then this sum as k goes from zero to n of the binomial coefficient n choose k. And then next, we have the integral from minus pi to pi of e to the i times n minus two k theta d theta. Okay, great. So now let's go ahead and bring this up and we'll move on. So on the last board, we got our goal integral down to the following form. So we have one over two pi, and then this sum n goes from zero to infinity, one over n factorial, and then this sum k goes from zero to n of the integral minus pi to pi e to the i n minus two k theta d theta. And I forgot to say my binomial coefficient n choose k here. Now we wanna use our second tool. So I'm gonna underline this one over two pi and then this integral over here. 
and then maybe I will notice by our second tool, this thing is equal to, well, if it's, it's one, if n minus 2k is equal to zero, and it's zero otherwise. So in other words, this is the Kronecker delta, n comma 2k. Great. So in other words, it's the Kronecker delta, um, n over 2 comma k. In other words, we only get a non-zero term when n is even, and when n is even, that non-zero term only happens when k is equal to exactly half n. Great. So that means I can replace everything underlined there with this Kronecker delta n over two comma k and recognize that that will also mean that I'm summing over only even terms after that happens because kind of under the hood here, we threw away all of the odd values of n. Okay, so let's go ahead and see what we have now. So the one over two pi and this will get collapsed into that thing over there. Then we'll have the sum over n goes from zero to infinity. And let's say even n. And now we have one over n factorial times, well, we're only going to keep the part where k equals n over two. So let's maybe point that out, only keep k equals n over two, so that means we have the binomial coefficient, n choose n over two. Great. So the next thing that I wanna do is re-index this sum so that I'm summing over all positive integers, non-negative integers, I should say, instead of just the even ones, and I can do that by replacing n with two n. So let's maybe say that, so we're going to re-index by replacing n with two times n. So that'll give us the sum as n goes from zero to infinity, but all of the values of n, not just the even values of n because of our re-indexing. And now we'll have one over two n quantity factorial. And then next we'll have two n choose n. So that's something called a central binomial coefficient. But now we can simplify this a little bit. So let's maybe go ahead and notice that that's gonna be the sum as n goes from zero to infinity of one over two n factorial. And then using the definition of binomial coefficients on natural numbers, that's going to be equal to two n quantity factorial over n factorial n factorial. Because it's n factorial and then two n minus n factorial. So now what we can see is that this bit cancels with this bit, and then we can combine those n factorials together, together to give us the sum n goes from zero to infinity of one over n factorial quantity squared. And that's as simple as we can make the solution. So to reiterate our integral up here, one over two pi times the integral from zero to pi of e to the two cosine theta d theta is equal to this sum as n goes from zero to infinity of one over n factorial squared. And that's a good place to stop.